The outdoors. Fresh outdoors. Word up, it's a beautiful day. I come in peace and I mean you well. Be kind to yourself. Be kind to others. Be kind to nature. And the universe... The universe will look out for you. Today, I want to share with you uh, a book that I'm reading at the moment. Um, I'm involved in some book clubs that I started. And literacy and especially amongst the youth and even the elder doesn't matter what walk of life you come from what background nationality age gender uh, you know knowledge is key information is key so today there's a book by an author named Colin Dickey um, this book is called Ghostland, an American History in Haunted Places. It deals with uh, the paranormal, the supernatural, uh, different entities. Uh, you could call ghosts, apparitions, specters, souls, spirits, and the likes. And uh, the narrative of these entities uh, in, our, in our nation, our American culture, society. The reason I'm bringing this up is uh, I just find it interesting and rather you believe in ghosts or not, the stories that keep some of the the names that's attached to it alive is done by the living. So it's, it's interesting that the living keeps the dead alive if you think about it. I'm going to read just a paragraph or two from a chapter in this book. Again, this is by Colin Dickey. It's called Ghostland, an American History in Haunted Places, and I'll have the information posted in the link. This chapter is called Awaiting the Devil's Coming. The churchyard of the Unitarian Church in Charleston, South Carolina is great with ghosts. Overgrown and rapturously baroque, the graveyard is evocative of the kind of southern gothic that seems ripe for spirits and phantoms of all manner. A sign meets you at the entrance, proclaiming that the paths are uneven and the grave markers may be unstable. Grass pokes through the disintegrating brick walkways, tombstones tilt amid the foliage, moss-laden trees drape over paths. Individual plots are contained by elegant lacy metalwork, and inside these quadrangles, stately obelisks and humble crosses call out, asking you to keep the memory of the dead alive. The weeds and other floral are eager to reclaim the markers of the dead. In the years since, a man named Ephraim Seabrook Mickle died in 1836, the roots of a giant neighboring tree have begun to consume his tombstone, granite and wood fusing together. The legend across the tombstone now reads, acred to his memory, the S, quote unquote, now buried inside the tree itself. The souls of the dead appear frequently, in cemeteries, Joseph Addison wrote in 1711, attributing the thought to Plato, and hover about the places where their bodies are buried, as still hankering after their old brutal pleasures and desiring again to enter the body that gave them an opportunity of fulfilling them. definitely aligns exactly what I was saying about how the living is key to keeping the name of the dead alive. On that note, I'll pick up with another chapter in another video and post that with you all. We out here in nature. Peace, love, smiles, truth, galaxy. 
be kind to yourself, be kind to others, be kind to nature, and the universe will support you. Peace.